Hello, I'm Keith Hart and welcome to the Through Strange Eyes concept video. Through Strange Eyes enables you to manipulate the geometry of your picture and gives you interactive creative control of your final image. This video will introduce you to the user interface and concepts that the program uses. Here we have Through Strange Eyes running. You'll see that the user interface is divided into two halves. This left half is concerned with the transforms. The right half is a preview pane. I can control how much space each of these two elements have by dragging this middle divider bar one way or the other. I can completely collapse one half and restore it or collapse it the other way by clicking on the arrows on that middle pane. At any point I can press preview on the preview half and it will give me um, a preview of the image that's been transformed through the entire transform stack. Each of these names here refer to a specific transform that's been applied to the image. Now if I click on any of the names, the tab that corresponds to that particular transform opens up. I'm going to walk through this in slightly more detail, building up a transform stack from scratch. So first I'm going to do transform load default transforms, and I'm left with just this image load transform. You select the image that you're going to use using File Open Image and it's rendered using the Image Load Transform. And the only thing this transform has done is it's mapped your image into a square. Next I'm going to add one of my favourite transforms which is the Variable Stretch Transform. I use the plus button here to open up the Add Transform dialog. I choose the transform that I want, there's a fair number of them, um, Variable Stretch and say OK. This is about as complex as the user interface gets on this left hand half. At the top I have the input that is coming into this transform which is the output from the previous transform which in this case is the image load. At the bottom I have the output of this transform and at the top here I have a bunch of controls which enable me to control what this transform actually does. Uh, if I grab one of these transforms, this top one here, you'll see that as I move the slider, the red line on the image at the top is moving, as I call these graffiti lines. And this enables me to accurately position where the effect will take place. When I drop the control, the image at the bottom will change. So let me move another one of these. As I move it, the yellow line at the bottom there is changing. When I let go, that wasn't very impressive. When I let go, the image at the bottom will instantly change. If I want the larger image to be refreshed, I have to press the preview button and I will see what's going on there. Let me quickly make this into a much more complete image by adding a polar transform, which creates a small world view. And I'm just going to add a circle mask to that as well. I have a reason for adding that circle mask, which you'll see shortly. So I just preview that. This is my output over here. Okay, so let's come back to the variable stretch and I'll just explain in more detail what this particular transform does and it'll give you an idea of some of the concepts that are behind Through Strange Eyes. So what the variable stretch transform does is it maps everything from this red line here at the top to the bottom of this top image into the space that's from the top to the bottom of the bottom image. So basically everything in the top above this red line just gets cropped off the image. Now it doesn't do that as a continuous one gradient, it does it in two steps. Um, let's move that bottom line. Everything from the red line here to the green line is stretched out so it's spaced between the red line and the yellow line in this image. Um, and then everything from the green line to the bottom is squashed down so it fits in to the yellow line to the bottom in the image. Uh, so basically there's two different scale factors that are applied to this particular image. Those scales factors are actually blended together on here so there's a completely smooth transition from one to the other which is why on this output image here you don't end up with any jagged nasty sharp lines or 
bends in columns or breaks in this um, tiled street. Everything is completely smooth. So as you distort the image, uh, the rest of the image just moves around to take up the slack and you know, seamlessly flows in. Now the idea of the um, variable stretch transform is that I probably want to have the whole image here all the way to the top. So these buildings come in and I can preview that as we go in. I've got too much of a circle mask crop on there. Let's pull that out. There we are. So now I get the top of my buildings in here. Um, and then I have some control about how big I want this central circle here to be. That's probably a bit too small. Probably got a bit distorted a bit. So I can move the bottom slider up there and preview that. So that's probably about where I want to be with this. Um, give me some nice uh, texture in the bottom, some strange distortion of the building here so I can see them a bit more. Um, if I want to see what the image would be like without this transform at all, um, I can see it's not quite as good. So this transform is adding some real value. Um, later on you'll see how I can control some of this flaring out. I can make some of these elements slightly larger. Uh, there's quite a wide variety of things I can do. It's all based on this principle that each transform that I apply just maps one square into the next and I can feed it into another transform and into another transform and so on. So that's probably given you enough on the transforms. I now want to finally save this image. Uh, there are some properties, so if I do File, Edit Properties here, we've got a 1000 by 1000 which is my output size. Um, don't worry about all the rest of this, it's explained in another video. I'm happy with that. So I'm just going to do File, Save Image and it offers me the same file name as my input image with this underscore out appended to the file stem. Um, I'm just going to say save to that. little red uh, orange progress bar creeps across here and, and then we're done. So thank you very much for watching this video. Uh, I hope it inspires you to download it and have a play with things. And I hope you get on well and you start to see the world as I see the world through strange eyes. Thank you. Whoa.